Hey guys, Tap Daddy here. Uh, today I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to export your stems in Ableton Live. I also wanted to give you some general advice for how to provide quality, well-organized stems to your mix engineer that's going to make your engineer's life a whole lot easier and will help you come across as a more professional, experienced music producer. But first off, uh, I know a lot of you just came here just to learn how to export your stems in Ableton, so let me just go ahead and show you how to do that. Alright, so here we are in Ableton. Uh, as you can see, I am in a rather large project. It's got about 44 stems on it. A lot of instrumental and vocal stems. So in order to export all of these individually, I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go down to Export Audio slash Video, and then you want to make sure that in the rendered track it says All Individual Tracks. That's what's going to allow you to export 44 different WAV files at the same time, reflecting each of the MIDI or audio tracks uh, that you have in your Ableton project. And then once you have all of your uh, settings set how you like them, you go down and press export. Now here you're going to select a folder to dump all of these into. I like to make a folder called stem dump where it's just going to throw all of these stems into and then I organize later. Uh, you just press save and then it is going to render all of those tracks and just spit out 44 different WAV files. These are your stems. And as you can see, this is the stem dump folder. This has all of my 44 WAV files. Now you'll notice that they all start with gold tooth example stems and then the uh, name of the track. So that, that's quite a handful. Maybe I shouldn't have named them gold tooth example stems because that's just a lot in front of it. Uh, for my actual stems for this, I just named it gold tooth so that the mix engineer knows that they're working in gold tooth. So now that you've got all of your stems put into one folder, uh, you're ready to send it to your mix engineer, right? Wrong. No. You are not ready to send it to your mix engineer. If you send your mix engineer this, they're going to be so annoyed with you. They're going to be like, wow, I have no idea what I'm working with. I have no reference to know if this even is supposed to sound this way. This is a nightmare for any mix engineer to just work with this giant folder of random stems. You need to organize this in a way. And it's also helpful to provide references, demos, um, for how these are supposed to sound together. So let's step out of this for a second and you'll see that I have another folder called Final Stems. This is where I intend to organize everything into. So let's go into Final Stems um, and I'll show you basically how I like to organize everything to just make it a lot easier for whoever has to work with these stems. Uh, so here on the top layer of my final stems folder, you'll see I have a folder for instrumental stems, a folder for vocal stems, and then I included this demo. Now I think it is very important to include some sort of reference for your mix engineer to work from. If anything, it's helpful for them to have something to listen to to at least hear if these stems are all lined up properly. It also doesn't hurt for them to at least hear how you envisioned the final project to sound like so that they know, you know, that whatever mix they're putting together isn't a mile off mark or that it's an actual improvement on what you actually had. But anyways, uh, let's dig deeper into this file structure uh, and I want to show you guys a couple other tips for organizing. Now in your instrumental stems folder, you are going to want to have like a folder for different grouped instruments, like everything that's in my drum rack. And here I'm going to want to provide a mixed example of how the drum rack is supposed to sound like together or how it sounds like at the moment together. Um, I separated ev out everything that's in my drum rack so that my kick is on its own track, my snare is on its own track, and so forth. And so the way that you would do that is, first of all, you want to duplicate your drum track that you currently have. And the reason that why we want to do that is we want to preserve one copy of our drum track that is all ready mixed together. This will be your reference for the drums. Uh, but then down here we're going to separate this out and it's very simple. You just create another MIDI track, uh, you select this track up here again, and like let's move this kick onto its own track. And boom, there you go. It's, uh, that's just all of the kicks that are in this track and as you can see up here it is now missing all of the kicks from this track. That's why we duplicated it. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one. 
Um, so I'll just click back up here. Um, I'm going to move this snare. And yeah, look, there's um, all of the snares from it. And you can see this is getting more barren because we're removing elements from it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much just how you separate them all out. And this just gives your mix engineer a lot of control over the mix and how in depth that they can get. It's a lot easier to say raise the kick two decibels uh, when you have everything already separated out than if you're working with somebody's stem that is the entire drum rack in one WAV file. So be sure to really break down all of your drum kits, all of your samples, and so forth. All right, moving on though to the vocal stems. As you can see, I have uh, different folders for let's say a, two different rappers and then maybe a chorus where they are both going to be on there. So for each of these, you should have a mixed reference of how their verse should sound um, or currently does sound mixed together. Uh, and it, this also helps the mix engineer know just like where the ad-libs line up with the actual verse and just stuff like that. Let's say if rapper A has two different verses, then I will break this down into two different verses. We'll say one for verse one and then another for verse, not voice, <laughs> verse two. Simple enough. Uh, and you'll do the same thing for rapper B. And then the same thing for the chorus. You might even have uh, several choruses. Uh, and in that case, I would just do it at this layer. I would call this one chorus B and this one chorus A. So I hope that's simple enough. Uh, I, I think that your mix engineer is definitely going to thank you. Uh, one last tidbit of advice is to actually name your track something that makes sense. Uh, you know, your stems are not gonna make sense if, you, if they really have no relation to what the stem is about. If you have a synth lead in your track, maybe just name it synth lead and change it from, you know, whatever the name of that synth was. Basically, you want someone who has never heard your track to be able to work from the references that you provide them uh, and immediately know from the names of the stems uh, what they correlate to in the reference that they're listening to. Now, I also had one last bit of advice that is just more correlated to how to provide quality stems. Uh, and I think this really just comes down to what kind of a pr track you produced. Now, if you have a super busy track, uh, something that is really crowding the rapper, it's going to be such a nightmare for your mix engineer. And if it's too much of a nightmare, this mix engineer is going to tell the rapper like, hey, stop buying beats from this producer. His tracks are just hellish to mix. You know, and that happens sometimes. You don't want to be that producer. But essentially what makes for a good track that is going to be something that is going to result in a very easy time for your mix engineer and have a very clear mix uh, is a track that has a lot of flair but also leaves a lot of room for the rapper. I think this is definitely a common mistake with uh, newer producers is they might get pretty good at music production, but then they want to really show that off in every aspect of their track. The result is something that is very busy uh, and hard to rap over. And it, it's not just that it makes it difficult for the rapper, but it also makes it difficult for the mix engineer that has to mix in the rapper into this very busy track. So my advice is listen to music that has been professionally produced um, and listen to just how crowded it is and what they they do to kind of ornament their track and make it have flair. Usually it's things that are pretty minimal. But anyways, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. If you've ever seen a Tap Daddy video before, you know that I like to end my videos by making a beat. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Before we get to that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful at all, please leave a like and consider subscribing because I'd love to see you back here next week. So until next time, my name is Tap Daddy. Thank you so much for watching. Watching, um, and happy producing. Drums take one.
Fatality.